MZ TV. Welcome everyone to MZ TV. I'm Martin Zender. First of all, I would just like to thank all of you who make comments on my videos. It is a great forum for us to fellowship. I, I really love the comments. I read them. And as I've always said, you're the smartest audience on YouTube. Not only do you comment on my videos, but you add nuance and you bring up other verses and you help me to expand my knowledge on these topics. And I know we are all grateful to God that he is revealing himself. This is the day of revelation. This is the day of coming to truth in the face of Jesus Christ. In the past, God spoke in parables and riddles. Even our Lord, when he was on earth, spoke in parables. But now we see face to face. We look directly into the face of Christ. No more riddles, no more parables, no more fog, no more mysteries to solve. It's in your face truth. And the fact that we have this opportunity to fellowship together, to speak to one another, of these things I just really rejoice in it I'm thankful for you thankful for thankful for the format uh, that God has given me given us to explore these great things what what could be more important really what could be more important the longer this eon goes the the more it goes to smash the more inconsequential things barrage us every day and the things we are discussing and have been discussing for years, but especially these last two days, are things of consequence. And you can't spend your time a better way. So, any God, whether it's small g or the capital G God, there was always a system of approach to that God. That's the common characteristic, really, of a either the false God which are actual gods, mind you. you. You do understand that, that there are actual, very powerful subjectors. For that's what the name God means, a subjector. There are false ones, but they're very, very powerful. There's only one true God. But again, the one thing in common is that they have a system of approach. And one who hoped to approach the deity had to follow the rules and do everything correctly. The true God, Yahweh Elohim, introduced to humanity a system of approach. He set up the tabernacle system where the priests could, in the stead of the people, for the sake of the people, entered into the presence of God, which at that time was a token presence called the Shekinah glory, the shining, which dwelt in between the wings of the cherubim. And of course, God prescribed all the ways that the tabernacle was to be built. There was nothing left to guess work. This had to be so many cubits. This has to be had to be made of gold. This had to be this curtain had to be made of a certain material and had to have so many rings and the proportions of the rooms, the holy place and the holy of holies were absolutely with great specificity described by God. And of course the priests had to wear certain garments of a certain fabric and they had to prepare to go into the holy place. There was a labor outside in the outer court, or I should say the holy place, the holy area. There was a labor and there was an altar. The altar was for the sacrifice, the labor was for the priest to wash, and everything had to be done according to prescription. You couldn't make up your own rules. You couldn't wear what you wanted to. There's no such thing as casual Friday or casual day of atonement where you just wear anything you want. No. God has had a specific way that men were to approach him. And this was necessary to set the stage for an intimacy with God. 
that just was not enjoyed by these early peoples, the Israelites. They, they didn't exactly enjoy intimacy with God. It was a sweat-producing enterprise. The priests had to wear linen that would keep them from sweating. Why? Because they were quite apt to sweat when going into uh, the holy place. They went in with fear and trembling. However, however, year after year after year after year, the priests successfully followed the rules and they su successfully brought the offering to God and God accepted it. Why did God accept it? Because they did it right. But since the death, entombment, and resurrection of Christ, we are shown an intimacy with God that the early Hebrews, the early Jews, never knew was possible. To the point where Paul says in Ephesians that we now have access with confidence to the Father. Uh, that concept was unknown to the early Israelites. Access with confidence. The way I always describe this is that God invites you into his home and gives you free reign. You know, when people invite me into their house, maybe you're one of them, people usually say, it's a very nice thing to say, say Martin, make yourself at home. Uh -huh, be very careful when you say that to me because I will make myself at home. I will probably open the refrigerator. See what you got in there. And if I can't find a glass, I'll open the cupboards to find out where you put the glasses. Most people like that. I mean, I don't take it too far. You know, I don't crawl into your bed and say, I'm going to take a nap. But God does do that. God does do that. He invites us into his home, which is analogous to his, his presence. And we are now able to be ourselves. We can go in knowing we're clean because God has pronounced us clean. That is justification. The Jews who went through the old tabernacle system, they didn't have that luxury. Again, they had to do everything right. And this is why the passage I'm about to read you from Ephesians chapter 2 is so astounding. It's so different than anything that went before. It's so different than any possible way to approach any deity, whether the one true deity or the false deities. Again, the one thing in common, before I read this, I need you to get this in your mind. The one thing in common is that there is a way to approach the deity and you can't wing it. You have to do it exactly as prescribed. But with the one true God, that was possible because Israel successfully did it. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to Ephesians chapter two. To get the context, let's start with, it's hard to know where to start here, it's all so great. Yeah. Here's a good way to start it in verse four, Ephesians two. God being rich in mercy because of his vast love with which he loves us, we also being dead to the offenses and the lusts, vivifies us together in Christ, in grace are you saved, and rouses us together and seats us together among the celestials in Christ Jesus, that in the oncoming eons he should be displaying the transcendent riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. I'm winding up to it, it's still coming. It's still coming, watch this. For in grace, through faith, are you saved, and this is not out of you. We're saved by grace. Faith is the channel by which we apprehend grace. Let me read it again. In grace, through faith. Grace is the substance, faith is the channel. Through faith are you saved, and this is not out of you. What is the this referring to? It's referring to the 
property in the immediate context, which is the faith. And grace through faith are you saved. And this, the faith, of course, is not out of you. Where does it come from? It's God's approach present. Approach present. Not of works, lest anyone should be boasting. Here is the most startling thing in the scriptures that was absolutely unknown in times past, in times before the Apostle Paul, through the resurrected Christ, brings us this amazing message of access to God, of not having to go through an entire list of prerequisites in order to be in the presence of the deity. Oh, that reminds me, did you ever, did you ever see the series uh, John Adams? There's a great scene, uh, Paul Giamatti played John Adams and he became the first um, ambassador to England. Of course, England very recently had the enemy of the colonists, uh, we rebelled against England. We're kind of a rebellious lot over here. Uh, and England didn't like that, so we had to fight a war to procure our independence and we won the war because those British would just, they would march in straight lines. They were very regimented, but we would sneak behind trees and we would pop you from behind a tree. That's the way we operated. We didn't, didn't follow any of the rules. But anyway, we won the war. It's called the Revolutionary War. And we sent John Adams to England to be the first ambassador to the United States. This would be the first time that uh, the new country having been formed would have a representative in the country that was so recently its enemy. There's a great scene in the film. I'll put a link down here if I can find it, okay? I'll, I'll put a link down here where they're, where they're instructing Adams how to approach King George. Uh, this is a big deal. This is a big deal. It could be, it's a very tense situation because for the first time these countries are establishing a foundation of amicability and they it's very important for this to go well and they're telling Adams the way the bow you're supposed to bow once never turn your back on the king you approach you bow once you take three steps forward you bow again and there's a certain way to bow you had to sweep your arm like this and Adams couldn't get the hang of it because he was a country bumpkin all of our founders were country bumpkins they were farmers and so they weren't used to this kind of protocol so they're trying to tell John Adams what to do and he's barely getting it so he, he walks in with fear and and trembling into uh, the chamber of the king of England who's very regal and waiting for Adams to make a mistake but and it's a it's a it's a it's a great scene and there's a friendship there between our country and and Great Britain but to read here that it is now God bringing the approach present. God, this is unheard of, of any deity, let alone the deity. The, the deity is approaching. The deity has a gift. We are actually, in this amazing construct, we are the ones, I can barely say this, but I'm going to, we're the ones on the throne. We're the ones who are watching God approach. And God is bringing the gift in this immediate context. Grace is God's approach present. But grace is revealed through who? Through a person. Grace is revealed through the Lord Jesus Christ. So I don't think it's I would have lied to extrapolate here and say that that grace is personified in a person, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is God's offering to us. This is astounding language. God's approach, President, God is approaching humanity with a gift. But I don't want you to think that it's an approach in that I hope they like this. I hope that they accept my gift. That's what we hear from, from Christianity. Well, that might have been the way it worked when it was the other way around, when it was humanity 
the priests in Israel bringing their approaches, bringing their presence, bringing their sacrifices to God. They had to do it right, but they did do it right. So if there were times that even weak human beings correctly followed God's instructions, his protocols, and brought a sacrifice that was acceptable to God, do you not think that when the deity gets his present arranged and ready, that it is going to be anything but absolute perfection? No, of course, it is absolute perfection. And so it is not a matter of humans deciding whether to accept it. It's not a matter of that at all because the sacrifice is perfect. And there's no opportunity for the human to reject it. It's not as the Christian example goes that salvation is God offering you a present, but unless you accept it and open it, it doesn't belong to you. This relegates, downgrades salvation to an offer instead of an accomplishment. But if they were to follow through even with that lame example, if I give you a birthday present, it doesn't matter whether you open it, open it or not. Why do you have to open a birthday present for the present to be yours? That's absolutely ridiculous. It's yours. I put it in your home, or if you're going to somebody's wedding, you pile the gifts on a table, and it's theirs. If they don't open, if they don't want their blender, then it's their stupid problem. It's their blender. It belongs to them. And so, <laughs> it is ours what God has brought. But again, the astounding thing is that it is God approaching humanity with Christ, putting us, in a sense, on the throne. I mean, it's not like he's fearful and trembling like the priests were in Israel. No, it's not like that at all because he's God and he does everything perfectly. This is a an approach. I still can't get, okay, an approach? God approaching humanity? But the old way was so ingrained in people that even Christians today cannot accept this. How ironic. This is very ironic. They say, the Christians, that you have to accept the gift or it's not yours. And they assume that they accept it. But they don't. They actually do not accept the gift because they put strings on it. It's a sacrifice so perfect. But according to them, if you follow it through, it's not perfect. Because if it's perfect, it can't be rejected. Not even God rejected men human beings, mortal human beings who follow the protocol. So do we have the power to reject God? The Christians say that we do. We do have the power to reject God. And so they, while believing they accept his offer, they are not accepting his offer at all because his offer is not something that can be accepted or rejected. It is there. It is yours. They don't accept that. What an irony. They don't accept the thing that they say you only have to accept. And when are you going to accept it, people? When are you going to accept it? You, you still have it. What you're accepting is not the gift, is you're accepting the strings that you've put on the gift. You've put strings on the gift. You have to say the right prayer. You have to go to church. You have, you have to be baptized, this and this and this. And they accept those things. But those things aren't the thing. The thing is free. The thing is in your account. The thing is perfectly presented by God. Love these ironies. They're not little ironies. They're huge ironies. So what a new era we're living in. People say God doesn't do different things at different times. Are you kidding me? What a vast difference between humans approaching God hoping to be found acceptable and God approaching humans with something that is completely acceptable, so acceptable, so perfect that it cannot be denied. And that is grace, which is, I remind you, 
favor granted to those who deserve the opposite. And it is grace personified in God's own Son, Jesus Christ. It's not an offer, this salvation. It's a done deal. And it's presented. It's presented by who? By God. It's presented as a done deal. We accept it because it is a done deal. Our enemies, the Christians, they don't accept it as a done deal. They add qualifications to it. They add strings to it. And by doing so, they destroy the very nature of grace. Grace, again, is favor given to those who deserve the opposite. They misconstrue that. They pervert it to say that grace is given to those who do things correctly according to their own standards. Bah humbug! Bah humbug. Enjoy the new revelation. Enjoy access with confidence to the Father that was unknown in other generations. We are blessed to be living in this time. And I am happy today to be enjoying this wonderful thing together with you.